up, everybody? It's Kate. And it's JJ. And where are we at right now, JJ? <laughs> Should we tell them? Yes. Okay. Right now, we're sitting <laughs> crisscrossed applesauce in our uh, our closet. <laughs> <laughs> we just moved into our house in Franklin, Tennessee. And JJ just got here after driving cross country, which was, I'm sure... Amazing. Yeah, me and the uh, me and the dogs. Twenty eight hours. I didn't do it straight this time. You know, last time I did a road trip with the dogs. I just wanted to see if I could do it, so I did twenty four hours straight to Dallas from California. That's horrible. That was that was a bad decision. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you did not do that this time. But now we are here in our house and we're waiting for our stuff to get here. Shout out to Roadway Moving because they are honestly amazing, and um, our stuff is arriving this week. But until then, we're in our closet recording and we don't have our podcast studio set up. And we only have one mic that we are sharing right now. Did you know it was cheaper to get movers than it was to get a U-Haul? Yeah, that's nuts. Is that crazy? It's actually wild. Okay, so you guys, we are in a season on online dating, your favorite topic. And we are bringing back some of the best episodes on online dating from our archives and we are resharing it with you guys. Uh, last week, we had Hannah Brencher. She spoke at HODC 2023. Actually, nobody heard that unless you were there live or online. Um, that was never on the podcast. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. I love Hannah's story. And that episode was super practical. And today, me and my friend Kat Harris talk. This is a throwback for sure, because we this was like years ago. But I still like really love this episode. And we talked today about, yeah, the the woke of online dating and fun fact jj i was single during this episode single as a pringle online wait were we dating during this episode or no you were single single i was single single oh so you were on the apps i was on the apps. what was your favorite one oh at the time i don't know i was using upward i know that and i was also probably using maybe hinge i can't remember what's the one where all the la actors uh and all the the rich people are on Raya. Yeah, were, were you on Raya? I was on Raya at Whoa. some... Oh, <laughs> you're one of the rich people or the LA people? I think I was. Oh, no, you know what? I was on the leak. Raya, they never accepted my um, application. Oh, so you applied. Definitely. Okay. Oh, and before we let you go, what do we got coming up in June? We have the coolest thing ever in June. School of Dating. <laughs> Yeah. If you guys don't know, this is our eight week mentorship program. We run it a few times a year. We just wrapped our um, January cohort. What number cohort was that? I think seven or eight. I think that was eight. So cool. I know. So, uh, hey, if you guys want, book a call with me. One thing that we did do is if you book a call with me, we give you guys first dibs to class with the best price available. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Best price and first dibs. And all you have to do is suffer through a 15-minute phone call with me to talk to you about school dating. So if that sounds good, I think my favorite part, and when I tell people, and I told people at the lunch we did at conference, Half the people listening here do not need to do it. Like you need to wait. And half the people here on the fence probably need to do it. You just have to decide which one you are because I know you've heard about school dating at this point. So feel free to book a call with me and we can walk through it together. You can just text first dibs to 214-225-7772. Then you'll be on our first dibs list to be the first to know about when School of Dating opens. Because fun fact, uh, last time with School of Dating for a January cohort, we never even promoted it to all of Heart of Dating because it sold out. So if you are on the first dibs list, we'll send you that link to get a call with JJ. You can also go on the website for School of Dating, join schoolofdating.com to sign up for that. But also on the first dibs list, you will be the first to know and the first to get our biggest discount, which we don't publicize. Okay, the second thing we want to let you know is in two weeks from now, we have our Patreon Spring Fling event. What? Hey, we did a Valentine's event, which is awesome back um, around Valentine's. Actually, it was on Valentine's Day. And we did a live podcast recording as well as live blind dates. And people could actually apply to be on those live blind dates. And it was such a hit. Uh, And word on the street is... 
some things are still happening from those live blind dates, but we are doing the same kind of event again. And now we are calling it the spring fling event. Okay. For this spring. So join us Tuesday, April 23rd at 5 PM Pacific, 7 PM central. Uh, the only way to join is if you become a Patreon member at $5 a month. And so you can go and join at patreon.com forward slash heart of dating, just five bucks. You can cancel anytime, of course, and you also really help and support this podcast. You can apply to be on a live blind date. So we are so pumped about that. And we hope to see you at our spring fling event. All right, without further ado, this episode with Kat. Girl, <laughs> this is the second time, girl. This is amazing. Oh it's so fun, and I. It's so interesting because I feel like the, whenever you and I are talking just on the phone in our own like everyday lives, we're both like, "Wait, you experienced that? Oh my gosh, me too. Oh my gosh, me too." <laughs> and our lives so, are weirdly parallel in so many ways. It's oh really God. crazy, right? <laughs> so crazy, so crazy, so crazy that we're seeing Celine Dion the same weekend. So there's that. <laughs> I can't believe that I'm, so I'm going to see Celine Dion for my mom's 60th birthday and we've been planning it for a few months now. And then I was like blasting it all over Instagram. And then you DM'd me and you <laughs> told me you're going to be going the day before me. I was like, wait, are you serious? I was like, I'm literally going that weekend. Too. <laughs> this is so, is so strange. Crazy. The same thing. Like, this is so funny. Who cares? It, people are like, okay, you guys are strange, but this is why we're soul sisters. I seriously believe that. Soul sisters. Are and <laughs> you sent me the uh, Spotify playlist of her set list. <laughs> and I have been listening to it like crazy. Non-stop. My roommates are like, please stop. <laughs> please. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> I cleaned my apartment this week weekend, just fully with Celine on blast. And it was the greatest thing ever. So my poor neighbors were just like, probably what is this woman doing? I just had my like cleaning glove on, cleaning the toilet, like singing Celine. Yes. Or maybe they were grateful because you introduced <laughs> them to the amazingness that is Celine Dion in case Seriously. they ever forgot. I know that's true. They need to be reminded. Everyone needs a reminder <laughs> once in a while. We all need to be reminded. <laughs> <laughs> well, girl, I am so pumped to talk about what we're talking about today. Cause I know you get these questions all the time. I get these yeah. questions all the time about mm-hmm. online dating 101. Like what do we do? People are so frustrated, ready to give up. But, you know, it's just the way of our world today. Like 2019, online dating is a huge thing. Um, And I know we both are active in it. And so I was like, what better than to just have a fun, open dialogue with one of my best girls on online dating, you know? Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) Absolutely. I get asked about online dating almost more than anything else. And it's so fascinating to me. I think maybe it's because I live in New York and literally everybody online dates. So Mm -hmm. there is no stigma here. There's no weirdness or awkwardness about online dating because everyone does it. But I do remember living in Dallas Mm -hmm. years ago and there being like this embarrassment or stigma about online dating. And I still get those questions from women outside of New York and in different parts of the U S where it's still kind of like this dirty little secret, like, uh, am I allowed to online date? Is that biblical? Like, what does God think about online dating? And how do I even do it? And so yep. I definitely have a lot to say as I know you do too. I know. We literally talk about our stories behind the scenes. So now we're just bringing okay. all of it to light. Um, yeah. Let me start by asking you something you even just said, but like, it is online dating unbiblical? <laughs> that is a really good question. And I go back to the verse in the New Testament that says, everything is permissible, not everything is beneficial. Mm. And I think this is going to be individual from person to person. If this is going to be a win for you. And I think technology in and of itself is not evil. Mm -hmm. It is the heart behind why we are interacting with said thing, Mm -hmm. i.e. is Instagram evil? Yeah. No, it's not evil. It's not bad. It's not wrong. It's if I am on it 12 hours a day, 
that's reflective of a heart issue. So is online dating good, bad, evil, whatever you want to say? I say, no, thank God for the technological advances in our society. It's how I show up and interact with that and the heart behind Mm. my why. And I think the invitation of Jesus is always one of the heart. He is always interested in our heart behind why we're doing the things that we are doing. And he's always interested in relationship with us. Mm. So I believe interacting with online dating coming when we are coming from a space of freedom, wholeness, connected to our worth, identity in Christ, then we have all the freedom in the world to interact on the online dating space. Mm, I couldn't agree with you more. Seriously. And it's, it's like, I love that you say that, like check in with yourself and your intentions and come at it with a place of wholeness. Like then, yeah, it's, it could be a really amazing thing. I love that. Mm -hmm. So why in essence are you like about online dating then? Yeah. So I think online dating can be really positive for a lot of different reasons. One, it's the culture and world that we live in today. Mm -hmm. So what is, so the question I ask myself is what is it to be in this world, but not of it? Right. Mm -hmm. So what does it mean to participate with online dating in a way that is positive? Um, especially in a space where, or not space or culture in which everyone's doing it. Right. Mm -hmm. So just because so much, I like hear my mom in the back of my head. Well, just because that person jumped off the bridge, are you going to jump off the bridge? <laughs> no, that's not necessarily what I'm saying. But I think it is important to take a look at um, the the trends of our culture and society and say, all right, is there a place for me to interact here? And I do think that there is. Mm-hmm. And I think something really positive about online dating is the practice that I get. Mm-hmm. So for me, online dating is all about practicing, putting myself out there, going on dates, interacting with men, practicing healthy boundaries, saying yes. And when to say no, even Mm. practicing flirting, Mm. like online dating is a very low pressure and low stakes way to interact with dating. And I think what can be really cool about that is I always say dating is stepping off a curb, not a cliff. <laughs> I love and that you say that. Yeah. I'm all about like de escalating the pressure. And with online dating, you're really, and this is dating in general, but I'm just getting to know another human being. Yeah. And Genesis 1 says God created man and woman in his image and his likeness. So that means that there is no such thing as a boring human being. Mm -hmm. So I can go on a date with no pressure of being like, oh my gosh, is this my husband? But (laughs) no, let me just get to know this other human being and practice talking with guys, practice those boundaries because I I don't know about you, but (laughs) so much of my life, I'm I am so good at hanging out with women. It is like my (laughs) wheelhouse. I want to watch the bachelor. I want to have spa day. I want to have girls nights. What I, so I don't really need help hanging out with more women. Mm -hmm. What What would be supportive to me is practicing being around men, practicing talking to men, practicing flirting. So Mm -hmm. I think online dating can be a great space to work those things out. I love that. And I also love like the flirting thing because it's like, we just have to say that flirting is not bad. It's not a non-Christian thing to do. And I think we need to be, don't lead people on, of course, like we're not saying like do that, but I think we've, we become so awkward and so stiff as Christians and it's like, we can have fun and we can flirt and we can touch a guy's arm for three seconds and we can say something cute and flirtatious and it's fine. It's totally fine. (laughs) Fine. You have the permission to flirt. It is okay. (laughs) Thank you. And amen. Okay. And amen. Oh, now something with dating apps, obviously, is like you ever feel slightly convicted in your spirit just with it being so visually driven a lot of the times? Not at all. Mm -hmm. I do not feel guilty about that at all. I think there's no shame in wanting to be attracted to the person that you are going out with and eventually marry. Mm. It's actually biblical to be Mm. physically and sexually attracted to the person that you're with. I mean, all you got to do is read the Song (laughs) Song of Solomon. Solomon. Yes. (laughs) God is all about us 
being sexually attracted and turned on by our spouse. So Mm. I think what I will say about how visually driven online dating can be is to be open to the unexpected. Mm. For example, girls, we know our angles, right? Like I'm like, okay, this is my side. Okay. Like this dimple. Okay. I put my hand on my hip. So we can be really good at taking good pictures for the most part or have friends direct us. Poor guys just don't typically have the best photos oh of gosh, themselves. They really or don't. if they have like all professional model photos, I'm like, okay, like, <laughs> uh, too much. Um, <laughs> so the same. definitely that like fine balance, but I would say like, first of all, does he love Jesus? Does he have a job? I love that Bianca Oltoff says that. Mm. Then I'm going to be open to going on a date with him unless he has like four arms or something like, <laughs> because <laughs> I think for me, you got to get in person to see if there's attraction because yeah. you can be, have that instant intrigue online of, Ooh, that guy seems cute. But I've, I've gone on dates with guys that I think are super hot. And then by the end of the date, or by the end of a few dates, I am totally not attracted to them once I get to know who mm. they are in their heart. Yeah. And the vice versa is totally true. You see a guy online and you, you're like, oh, I don't really think he's like totally my type. I go and spend time with him, get to know his heart, see him in person. Mm-hmm. And then I'm like, oh, actually I'm way more attracted to you. So I do not feel, I don't think there is any guilt or shame about it being visually driven. I think that's good and helpful, but I also say be open and just get in person and see if there is any chemistry because Mm. like we're three multifaceted beings and there's only so much you can see from a picture. So, (laughs) so, so, so true to your point, like poor guys, but they really don't have the best photos most of the time. Like they don't really (laughs) look the same in their photos in real life. So you really don't know. Like I see so many guys that I've know even in person, then I see their photos on their profile. I'm like, wait, you look so much more attractive in real life. Like, Oh man, that's, you know, and, but the same thing, if they have all, I mean, in LA, it's the guys with the actor profiles and they have all their actor pics and I'm like, oh my goodness. <laughs> like, uh, one too many bathroom uh, selfies, one too many photos. Too shoots. many headshots, too yeah. many stage headshots. Anyway, sorry to all those people in LA. I love y'all. But it's <laughs> still it's like maybe one, but come on, guys. Anyway, all yeah. that being said, I, I love that. Um <laughs> so talking about the profiles and kind of what to share. So a big part of it is like we're Christian, right? And we love Jesus, but how do you like share about loving Jesus without you, without coming off as a total Christian weirdo, which I've seen some of those profiles too. And I'm like, Oh, okay. He's like looking for the Proverbs, my Proverbs, perfect Proverbs 31 woman. I'm like, uh, and then goes on and on. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> See, I would definitely swipe right on that guy. I would be like, yes. <laughs> He's crazy off their face. Um, so for me, I am, I just try to be really clear because mm-hmm. ain't nobody got time to play games. Yes. And so I, on, well, on all the apps that I use, there's a preference for religion. Mm-hmm. And so I always put Christian and then through a lot of the different online dating profiles, you can put up quotes or Mm. curate questions and answers. And so I will always make one of my first comments, something like my faith is super important to me. And I'm looking for someone that shares my same faith or on, I have, I use multiple apps and one of them, it literally says, I love Jesus. And I hope you do too. (laughs) (laughs) I'm not trying to be weird about it, but I also want to be really clear because I'm really clear about what I want. I am looking for a serious relationship. I want to be with a man that loves Jesus. And so I am going to put that out there. Mm. Um, So yeah, just own it. Like own, Hey, I'm a Christian. My faith is important to me. And I'm looking for someone that shares that. Yeah, that's amazing. Clear to the point. We're not trying to be this cool Christian that's like just skating on the surface like, oh yeah, I'm I'm Christian. But I, you know, I'm like so many other things. It's like, no, be clear. That's your core value. Um, And 
think sometimes two ways to like discern that is you'll see, oh, like this guy says his favorite author is C.S. Lewis. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's like definitely the little ways where you can be like, oh, what are your favorite weekend plans? Yes. Oh, well, <laughs> brunch and church. What kinds of photos, I think this is helpful, should people not post on their profile? Because oh I think that so many people don't know about this. And like, yeah, yeah so what should you not post? <laughs> well, it's a fine balance, right? Because you want to have photos where you look good, mm -hmm. but not too good. <laughs> so <laughs> yes. kind of how we were saying, you don't want to date the guy that has all professional photos from their model photo shoot. Um, <laughs> is to, I always... I, because of what I do have a lot of professional photos of myself, mm -hmm. but on my online dating profile, I try to only have pictures that people have taken of me, like on yeah. my iPhone. Mm -hmm. Um, so you want nice photos, but not too nice. So, you know, don't be putting your LinkedIn professional headshot on there or all professional photos. It has to be that fine balance of like, you want to look nice, but don't go overboard and like pay someone a thousand dollars to take your photos. Um, <laughs> I'll say an another thing, no photos with an ex. Oh I mean, my when gosh. I see that, you say that so often and I'm just like, no, <laughs> like, what are you thinking? Um, no photos with an ex or with you and another guy friend, because yeah. that instantly looks like someone you're dating or mm -hmm. someone you used to be dating, even if it's your brother. I mean, yeah. let's just not, leave any room for assumption there. Mm -hmm. I say one of my personal pet peeves is when people blur out other people in the photo <laughs> or like make that really awkward crop to where clearly <laughs> there was someone else in the photo and you've awkwardly cropped them out. Um, <laughs> so I would say don't do those things. And I would limit group photos. Yeah. If you're going to do a group photo, maybe just do one towards the end. We want him to see you, not all your hot friends. <laughs> and sometimes it can be hard to figure out which one are they. Mm -hmm. And even as you just mentioned a few minutes ago, sometimes it can be hard to tell or discern what does this person actually look like? Mm. Don't make them guess. So, um, I would say limit the group photos to either zero or only one mm. and have it be after you've already had multiple solo shots. Mm. And then I would say, lastly, as silly as this might sound, no pics of you holding babies. Um, <laughs> because oh I, I literally just tried to post a photo with my, my best friend's little baby and my girlfriend's like, no. And I was like, but I love him so much. And, <laughs> and he's like so cute and look how cute he is. And they were like, okay, no, because first of all, again, someone is only looking through your profile, what less than a minute, mm -hmm. maybe less than even 30 seconds they're scrolling through. And unless you have a child and want to show, Hey, I'm a mother, I have a baby own that show that. But if you don't, I would refrain from posting photos where you're holding babies just That's because so it can be confusing. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. We don't want to be confusing. Be clear. I love that. <laughs> okay. We talked about so many things. Let me just boil it down to what are your top three online dating tips? Just if you could give people three yes. top ones. Yep. I say be strategic. And this is with every area of our lives. Specifically with online dating, what I mean is be intentional. Mm -hmm. So many of us download an online dating app and we never go on or we scroll through a couple times a day and it feels frustrating. So we delete the app a week later. Mm -hmm. Why not be super intentional when you have it? So mm -hmm. what something that I suggest is set a timer for 10 minutes in the morning and 10 minutes in the evening and literally set a timer, go through your profile, check your messages, do some swipe right, swipe lefts, and then get off. Mm. Don't checking in a thousand times a day. And then in the evening, do that again. Mm. That way you can be sure that you're actually being intentional about it as opposed to, oh, I feel like I'm on online. I feel like I'm on my app all the time. Well, maybe you just went on once and got frustrated and left. Or on the flip side, maybe you're spending way too much time and you're wasting your time and energy. Just be strategic. Yeah. So number one, be strategic. Mm -hmm. Number two, I say get in person ASAP. 
Ain't nobody got time for a pen pal. <laughs> I'm not looking for a pen pal. I don't know about you. Yeah, no. And this kind of goes along with what I said earlier. You really don't know if there's going to be something there until you meet in person. So as much as you can talk, go back and forth a little bit, and then either hopefully he'll suggest, Hey, do you want to grab a coffee? Or you suggest that. Mm. Hey, I love it. Would you like to grab a coffee or Hey, do you want to meet up in person? Because really I think it's when we get in person and spend real time and quality time with another person is when we get to figure out, all right, is this something that I am, is this someone that I am potentially interested in? And then Mm, I would say thirdly, be curious. Mm. When you match, say something about him that struck your eye. Like, did you really cliff jump? Question mark, question mark. (laughs) Whoa, you like surfing? How did you get into that? So let him know that you're not just swiping right on him. There is something about him that caught your attention and don't be afraid to initiate that and send that message to him and let him know, Hey, I see you. I see you over here. And I want to say something specific about something I noticed about you Mm -hmm. because everyone loves feeling like someone took note of them. Mm, So so be curious, reach out and say something specific besides, Hey, how's it going? Yeah. (laughs) Hey, what's up? Hey, how are Uh, you? Oh my gosh. It's like, (laughs) I'm already bored if that's the how the yes. conversation starts. Yes. I'm like, what no. do you do for a living? I don't want to talk about my job. I want to talk about dating you. <laughs> yeah, I want to talk about if I'm actually interested <laughs> in you. I'm like, yeah. Also, I love what the second one, the second point of like getting in person because this is not our time to like have our emotional love tank filled. And neither right. is it for like if that's happening to you. And like sometimes I found that I can be a really great emotional communicator. So if I have emotional connection with a guy like online, it gives me this false hope that like when we are talking so much and I'm saying this because I've been guilty of it, it like builds up the fact that there is like really, really a deep connection when I have Mm. never even met them yet. And then I meet them in person and I'm like, wait, we really don't have much chemistry at all. Totally. It can be, I mean, I recently, this was an online dating situation, but got set up with a guy Mm. from a mutual friend. And we had all of this like banter back and forth for a week before our date. And then we got in person and it was totally flat. And it was such a good reminder to me. First of all, I don't want to be texting back and forth with someone that I like constantly that I don't know. Yeah. Let's just, Hey, let's get in person. Let's spend time together. And if your date is a week out, you don't need to be texting him all the time. Mm-hmm. Wait until you actually meet them. Mm, love that. Okay. Do you have like any like favorite, do you have like a favorite dating app that you actually use? <laughs> yeah. So uh, I really like Coffee Meets Bagel. Mm, I like that one. Yeah. It's a good one. And a, re- a few reasons why I like it is you don't have unlimited matches per day. You mm. get six matches mm. a day mm. and you can filter, you can have deal breaker preferences. So why that's good for me is because I want to date and marry a Christian man. So I can make that a deal breaker. So then I'm only getting matched with other guys where that is on their profile as well. Mm -hmm. Um, so I like that. I like a a little bit more curated experience, less options, more of, okay, at least know like there's this like base level of, uh, shared worldview. I like that. It gives you some sort of filtering system. I like Mm -hmm. that versus just like a photo with like, I don't know, I haven't used like Tinder, but I can't imagine that Tinder is like that great. These days, I really don't know. You can tell me wrong, but it, to me, seems like there's not as much information on Tinder. And so I like that with Coffee Meets Bagel that you can filter by such a strategic detail um, and you really can get down in there so that you're not just like being matched with people that you've potentially nothing in common with because then it does feel like a waste of time right right like oh what am I doing here (laughs) like why not another non-christian six Uh, more non-christians oh lord help me once again Okay. Now I want to really talk, like, let's just talk some of the fun details. Like, do you have like a best and worst online dating story? I kind of want to hear both. So I'm sure you have them. You got lots of history. (laughs) 
<laughs> so my best online dating story isn't one specific story. It's mm-hmm. this is my favorite thing that happens in online dating mm-hmm. is I loved getting matched with guys I already know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's because so often, <laughs> that's always so funny. You're like, oh, hello. <laughs> like, oh, hey. But why I love that is because let's say I've been going to church for a while and I know this guy and I'm like, oh, he's super cute. Maybe we're friends. Maybe maybe we've talked a few times. Maybe I've known him for a long time, but that has just never come up in conversation or it feels like friend to zone. (laughs) Getting matched online with him is such a fun way of like testing the waters to Mm -hmm. see, oh, I'm going to swipe right and see if he's likes me back. And then you can at least be open to the conversation with the guy that's already in your life. And then on top of that, you can even just reach out to him or the next time you see him be like, Oh my gosh, I totally got matched with you online (laughs) and don't make it like this huge deal, but it kind of allows for, um, an open door in a friend group to be like, oh, you're on here because you're looking for someone. I'm on here because I'm looking for someone. This is a safe space to kind of acknowledge that and be like, hey, we should totally hang out sometime mm. with it low pressure and low stakes, as opposed to like, I think especially in Christian circles, it can be like dating can be so awkward, which I think is really weird and annoying. <laughs> um, yep, I preach. It literally happened to me today. I got connected to a guy that goes to my church. And so I was like, I've totally talked with this guy multiple times. I don't know if I am interested or not, but hey, this makes it a really easy, non-threatening way to get to know this person. So, um, good. so I love when that happens. Mm-hmm. I think it's super fun. It is fun. Um, I've definitely had that experience and I love it. I'm like, oh, and then sometimes it makes me be like, oh, wait, they're actively looking at date. Oh, and it makes me like reconsider them. <laughs> And then at the very least, I mean, if it doesn't work out, you can just kind of like have fun with it. Like, oh, hey, like, <laughs> April totally thinks we should go out. Um, or, oh my gosh, like, do you like my pictures? Or, oh my gosh, I love that outfit you're wearing. You know, I just think <laughs> it can be like an easy doorway to enter into like the flirtation mm. when you're kind of stuck in that friend zone. Yes. Um, <laughs> I so, love it. Okay. Worst online dating story. You already know this one, but it was my very first online dating experience oh, I love when it. I lived in Brooklyn. <laughs> and I didn't know the first thing about setups or blind dates. And I went on this date and the guy was an hour late, which oh gosh. at Peace this out. point I would have now I know if a guy doesn't show up after 20 minutes, I'm sorry, I'm leaving. Yeah. Like I didn't know. I was like, oh no, you're just supposed to wait indefinitely. (laughs) So he finally shows up. He's late. I was so embarrassed because I was at this wine bar and I was the only person in the restaurant because it was happy hour. So it was still early. And I'm like, oh my gosh, these people totally annoy being stood up. Um, Oh no. So then the guy actually shows up and he throughout the night tells me about a girl he hooked up with the weekend before at a wedding. And I was like, okay, like what are we doing? Here? Dude. Uh, no. Not cool. Um, so that was, you know, he was just a little bit of a, um, am I allowed to say tool on you? Yeah. Podcast? I mean, that's, that's real girl. <laughs> yeah. We were swearing up here. No, that's and then he was surprised at the end of the date when I didn't want to go out with him again. Yes. Like, that's First my favorite all, part. <laughs> you do not respect my time at all. And then you're telling me about a girl you hooked up with. Gross. <laughs> you're like, why do you even ask me out? I just think that the, the word I have for that is obtuse. When people just are obtuse, they just have no idea. I'm like, you are oblivious and totally obtuse to the fact that like, no, none of this is acceptable. <laughs> like, of course I'm not going out with you again. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Okay, girl, this has been so fun. I feel like we covered so much online dating grounds. Um, Love it all. You're amazing. In conclusion, people should try it. Um, And yeah, don't do the bad things, but have an open mind. Take Cat's three top tips and do it. Whether it's Coffee Meets Bagel or another app. um, Yeah, I definitely recommend for people to try it. So I love it. Okay, the very last question I ask everyone, girl, you already know this one because we've done this before, but what's your final nugget of dating advice? 
Be open to the unexpected. Yes. <laughs> yes. Be open to the unexpected. That's all I have to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. Especially with online dating. Got to do yes. it. Yes. Oh, girl, I love it. I'm going to see you in like six days. I cannot oh wait. <laughs> Five days, wait. maybe. I don't know. Yes, we like to figure out what we're wearing. Oh <gasps> I know. I think I'm wearing a sequin. I'm wearing sequins for sure. Okay, good. Because I'm definitely going to dress up. I'm just <laughs> You have to. I don't even care yeah. if I'm the only person, which we no, won't well, be. you will not. My family is going to be dressed up, so. <laughs> yeah. My girlfriend is like, I'm wearing a fringe skirt, sequin top. Yes. I'm like, yes, mm-hmm. do all of yes. it. All, all the extra. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. Can't oh, wait. Okay. <laughs> well, love you, girl. Thank you so Thank much you. for being on today. And right. let me just tell everyone where they can connect with you. I'm sure they kind of know because we connect together all the time. But where can they find you? <laughs> sure. Um, at The Refined Woman mm-hmm. on Instagram, therefinedwoman.com online mm-hmm. and The Refined Collective Podcast. Yeah, girl. Love it. The Heart of Dating podcast is created by Kate and JJ Tomlin. Shout out to our epic audio and video editor, Scott Caro. We have an amazing Heart of Dating team who helps bring the show to you each week. I want to shout out Kelsey Napier, our Heart of Dating digital marketing coordinator, and Elena Gibson, our brand and community manager. We couldn't do it without them. Now, if you guys have never ranked us or reviewed us on iTunes or Spotify, would you consider doing that? It would mean so much because our podcast can get more discovered and more people can learn how to better date as Christians. Don't we all want that? We launch our podcast each and every week on Wednesdays. So we will see you next week. Next week.